This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, how would it make you feel if you could draw this image? Well, I'm going to break this down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can have a go and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps that are easy to follow. So you'll learn not only the painting techniques, but also about the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that's not to say that you can't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Within Procreate, however, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And also the color profile within Procreate is one of the defaults on the list and it's the sRGB and it's the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the brushes that come free with the app. So within airbrushing, I'm going to use the soft brush, the medium brush, and possibly maybe the hard brush. Within artistic, I'm going to be using the leatherwood brush, but I'm going to amend it to make it more suitable. But I will explain that when we get there. Within elements, I might use the driven snow. And within luminance, I might just use the light pen just to really make things glow. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette. And each of these colors, if you go to the value section, has associated with it. If you tap on a color, it has a code, a hexadecimal code. The codes are down in the video description. You type them into this area, press enter. The color appears up at this circle, and then you can just tap it together yourself. Well, next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can gain access to exclusive content, extended versions of these tutorials, and obviously you can support everything I do here at this channel. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who are currently or have in the past supported me. It's made a massive difference in my ability to continue this channel. So thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do on layer one is just turn the canvas pretty much to solid black. So we'll just drag the first color into the canvas area and it just gets rid of that white Then stay on the same layer. We're going to go to the brushes, airbrushing, soft brush, go to our colors. I'm going to choose the second color on the top row. I'm going to put the brush size up to 100% and 100% opacity. And just in the very center, I'm going to tap it four times. Stay on the same layer, go to the third color. I'm going to turn it down from 100 to about 50, still 100%. Tap it once, maybe twice. And then I'm going to go to the adjustments over here, goes in blur, and blur that in to about the 40%. I'm going to go to our layers, create a new layer, layer two. And I'm going to stay on the soft brush with an airbrushing, back to my colors. May we'll go back to the black, first color. And then I'm going to turn the brush size down to maybe 15%, 100% opacity. And then maybe just do a band of that at the bottom. Gaussian blur, and then adjustments, blur it in to about the 50%. Go to our layers and create a new layer, layer three. Stick with the soft brush with an airbrushing. We're going to go to the fourth color on the top row. 10% size, maybe about 30% opacity. And just somewhere in the middle of that area. Do a few stripes of this. Now I'm quite happy if it's a little bit streaked. Bring it down. I'm not quite taking it to the top area of that black band. I want the brown to sort of dissipate out and fade into the black. We will go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll blur that in to about 20% anyway. Create a new layer, layer four. Back to my colors, I'm gonna go for the fifth color. Still going to use the soft brush with an airbrushing, but I'm going to turn it down from 10 to 5%. Lower on the opacity, so maybe only about 15. And then I'm just going to run lightly some stripes through here. Now, it's probably a good idea to run it the length and then hold so it snaps to a straight line. Then just, if you can't judge what's horizontal, you can always go with the other hand. Put your finger down, let go, and it's created a nice horizontal line. Go again, another line, again, hold. So it snaps, finger down, and I quite like the way it overlaps. I think that sometimes some of these streaks hold, finger down, some of these streaks actually add character. I'm going to almost imagine it's like a wood surface table, so you're going to get grain on that surface. So do a few, let them overlap a little bit, 
and it's quite subtle at this stage. We will further enhance that later. What I might do with those three layers is just pinch them together. So the layers four, three, and two. You can just pinch them a bit, a little bit tricky. If you're struggling to do that, tap on the top one, merge down, tap on the new top layer, merge down, and then that has done the job for us too. I'm going to create a new layer, layer three. I'm going to go to the hard brush within airbrushing, go back to my colors. It's only going to be a reference layer, so I'm going to go to the last color, the eighth color on the top row, down to 1%, 30% opacity should do. And then I'm just going to come into the center area, draw a rough circle until, until it closes, hold it, put your finger down and it should make it to a perfect circle. So we'll try that again. Draw a circle, hold till it snaps to a neater shape. And it just said the ellipse created at the top, but if you now put your finger down, take the Apple Pencil off, and then your finger, and you can see it's created a nice circle. Now it's a little bit weak at the top there, but it should still be enough to have completed the shape. And if it's not quite in the center, you can always now go to the Transform on Uniform. And you can just increase the size, get it as central as you like. Just kind of judge it either side as it looks central. Get it somewhere where you're happy with. You can always adjust some of these things a little later anyway, but that will do. I'm now going to start constructing some shapes around it for the base that the, the glass globe is going to sit within. So I'm going to do that on a new layer, layer four. I'm going to use the same brush settings that we just used, and I'm just going to draw a or an ellipse, close it. Again, finger down, and it should just create a horizontal ellipse. Then we go back to the transform. We can move it and judge it by eye until it's central. We're also going to reduce the size of it down until it's just containing the bottom area of our shape. Now, it is a little bit too tall. It's not squashed enough for my liking. So I'm going to put it on free form. Grab one of these circles and just squash it a bit more. Put it back onto uniform. Just try and manipulate it a little bit so it sits either side. So you've got a little bit either side that just will hold that shape. I think somewhere around there looks about right. Then on that layer, slide and duplicate it. Transform. Keep it on uniform this time. Pull it out, extend the size, and we're just going to bring it so it's lower down. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I've just done. Grab it again on uniform. Here it is, and it sits underneath the first ellipse. I'm going to try and get it, judge it by eye so it's central. Maybe increase it a little bit more in size. Again, just judge here compared to here. Does it look like it's the similar gap and distance? I think it does. Then we're going to slide and duplicate that layer again. Transform, keep it on the uniform and move it down. And this is for the very bottom shape. So we want it to be wider here and here. So again, just trying to judge it a little bit, see if it looks about right. If it doesn't, just move it around until you're happy with it. Maybe I'm going to move it further down, have a slightly bigger base. Sometimes difficult to judge by eye, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to use the symmetry tool at some point anyway, so don't worry too much. If, it doesn't, if it's difficult to judge and you think you might have got it wrong, then don't worry too much. We, we have another, a couple of methods that will help. Go to that layer again and duplicate it. Transform again. I'm going to just pinch it in from the side. Again, it's on uniform, so it's not going to distort anything. Perhaps I've pinched it in too much. Just a little bit. Again, check this compared to that. Does it look the same? If it doesn't, maneuver it until those two shapes look pretty much the same. Again, so it's just a little bit pinched in there and there. Maybe I've done a gun. Again, just a little bit too much. I want it to be subtle. Again, just maneuver it. Check that this little shape that's created is the same as that. And now I'm happy. Okay, so that is a few ellipses that could easily become confusing. So let's take all of layer four for now. Pinch them together, untick it, let's check, yes, okay. And let's create a new layer on top. So we're using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price. And you can access over 20 different categories, such as fur, lettering, nature, animals, and many others. So for example, at this time of the year, in autumn, in fall, a quick search of 
leaves, gives you page after page of really useful brushes and stamps that you might want to use in your paintings, and they can be super helpful. Start now and get the first seven days for free. Join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring their art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description. Gonna stick with the hard brush within airbrushing, still at the same settings. Gonna zoom in. And what I'm gonna do is take this edge, I'm gonna trace it and just dip it almost like it's a little curve. So it dips in there, joins up with there, maneuver it so it's easy. And then just try and, as best you can, follow that line. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Go to over the halfway point, hold it, and it should snap to a neater shape. Go to this shape again, and we're gonna curve it in here to that. And again, it's made a nice neat shape. When it gets to here, we're gonna curve it out that way. Again, hold it, and it should snap. I'm gonna do the same. Just zoom out so you can definitely see beyond the halfway point. Try as best you can to follow the lines. Go as slow as you need to. If it wobbles and misses the line in place, it doesn't matter as long as it's generally hold. And there you go. Now we've got these two ellipses at the top. So just curve around here. And again, just take your time, do it slowly. Follow the line as best you can. And you can see I've not done a great job, but if I hold it, there you go, it snapped to a neater shape. I'm going to try and get it where it joins up. Just judge it. And when we remove the guide underneath anyway, we'll see what we've got. Hold. That will do. Okay. So we'll go to the one underneath it, layer four, and turn that one off. And you can see what we've ended up with. So we'll zoom in, see exactly what we've got. And you can see it's not perfect. So we can just tidy them up, tidy that up so it joins up. And then again, we've got something rather untidy here. So let's just join that up. And that's fine. We're going to go to that layer and slide and duplicate it. Zoom out so we can see it. Then we're going to go to the transform. Flip it horizontal, and then we're just going to move it to the side, and we should be able to line it up. Again, look at some of these shapes, so you can see that shape compared to that one, so I probably need to continue to move it. It's on uniform, I'm not really changing much other than just positioning it. Try as best you can to get some of these lines to join up. Now, it's going to be a little bit of overlap of some of these shapes, and that's not really a problem. But you can see that that is roughly the same as that, and then that will do. Again, it isn't perfect, and there's nothing wrong with this at this stage. So we've got two different layer fives, pinch them together. So now it's all on one layer. And again, it's just a guide layer. Look at the overall canvas. I think they were a little bit high up. Got a, rather a lot of table showing there. So what I'd like to do with that is just reposition it further down in our canvas. And then obviously I'll need to go to the sphere it's not that one, it's layer three, isn't it? And move it down so it sits in its little base and looks even on both sides. Check that shape, don't forget. So now we've got the, the shape of the circle, but what I really like to do is make a little bit of a color shift on the globe compared to the background. Because apart from that line, there's no difference. I want there to be a bit more of a strong difference. So what I'll do on layer three is go to the selection, automatic, and when you tap on it, at a higher percentage, it ignores weak areas, faint areas of a line you might have created at the higher threshold percentage. But if you keep your pencil on the screen and slide it down, you can see it closing up that line, getting more sensitive to that little faint bit of the, the line at the outside. And now it is only choosing the area within that line. Tap on the layers and you create these little lines in the background, but it's now made it translucent, transparent in that center area. So on these layers, we'll create a new layer, layer six. I'm gonna go in with my soft brush, with an airbrushing. I'm gonna to go to the first color on the top row. Size down to 5%, 25% strength opacity, and I'm just gonna draw a line around the edge. Can be a little bit weak, just go over it a couple of times. That's fine. And then I'm going to go to the third color on the top row. Turn that up to 10%. Just tap that in a few times. Doesn't make a lot of difference, but it's enough. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that in to about the 30%. Deselect the adjustments. I'm going to keep the selection on, however. Now, if I wanted to just demonstrate the difference now, I could deselect that. And it's subtle, but if we get rid of layer three, 
you'll still just be able to see a color shift from the inside of the globe compared to the outside. However, I do want to keep layer three in for now. Still on layer six, I'm gonna go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing. We're gonna go for the second color on the bottom row. Now, if for some reason you accidentally deselect on the selection, it isn't a problem. If you've just done it and you've noticed, you can two fingers back and it will reselect it. But let's just imagine you haven't got the option anymore. Go back to the layers, go back to layer three, select, automatic, and again, grab it. Layers, back to layer six, and you're back where you were. So as I was saying, soft brush, airbrushing, second color bottom row, just down into the 2%, size and 25% opacity. And I'm going to draw kind of ground level snow here. Now I don't really, I'll zoom in, I don't really want it above that line too much but it's not going to sit neatly on that line. So I'll just go roughly in that area. And I don't mind if it undulates, get some bits that stick up, other bits that are down, maybe a slight rise at the side. Because we've only got the inner part of the circle selected, you can go right up to the edge and not worry. Bring it down. And this is the point where it meets the base. So I don't really care to bother adding it below that point very much. We don't have to respect that line though. We can go over it a little bit if we need to. That isn't an issue. We've just got that ground snow area. Go back to our colors. We'll choose the third color along, lower on the 2% and maybe up to about 50% opacity and maybe even lower. In fact, let's go down to the 1% and we can just start to really bring in some highlights, variation in texture in and amongst some of that. Maybe 1% is a little bit much. Let's just, just nudge it into the 2%. Maybe slightly lower on the opacity as well. Maybe about 30. And we're just creating some kind of highlights in the mix, some texture, especially on that back edge, a little bit lighter. And then here in the center area, just some dashes, create some variation. When we get to kind of about halfway, then I'm also going to create a bit more. So another undulating line that kind of goes up and down, almost like a wave, like so. Back to my colors, I'm going to use the first color. And then in that bottom area, I'm just going to almost create like a shadow section, the bottom there, underneath that light wave that we've just created. Not going to be dramatically different, it's just a little bit, for now anyway. So I'm going to create a new layer, layer seven. I'm going to go with my brushes to the artistic medium brush I'm going to put it on the first color on the top row that black I'm going to have it at I'm going to have it at about well maybe one percent size and 80 percent opacity Be careful not to hide little dots and I'm going to do the base of our trees doesn't matter if they lean a little bit they don't have to be absolutely perfect but we just want to position some trees in here now as they get slightly towards the edge I'm going to have them just a hint curving but not too much I think if it's too much it's just gonna look too much like it's looking at something that's through and behind the globe we want it to be contained within the shape so not too much distortion otherwise it will look like we're looking right through a bubble to get some variation in sizes like this then I'm just going to scribble left to right in a kind of rocking motion just to create our trees so, I want them to be pretty rough at this stage. We're not going to see much of this black in the end anyway. When it gets down to the bottom, we don't really want too much of it being shown. We'll do this for all of them. You could just scribble it left and right even. In many ways, fill it in if necessary. Get rid of the gaps, that's a problem. Again, just scribble it left and right. It gets broader as it gets nearer the bottom. Just very rough initially, anyway. Maybe thicken up the tree trunks at the bottom there where it joins the snow. Get them a little bit more set in and established. So that's the foundation color. Then we are going to go to our layers and create a new layer, layer eight. We're going to switch to the first color on the middle row. We're also going to switch brushes to the artistic leatherwood brush. 
Now the Leatherwood brush, if we tap on it, I've changed the spacing. By default, it will be 17% and I've put it up to 40 and that's within the stroke pass. So if you put it to 40%, click done, you'll notice it's deselected the circle for some strange reason. Not a problem, we go back to layer three, selection on automatic, tap on it, and then we can go on the layers and back up to layer eight one now. So again, within the Leatherwood brush, zoom in, put it to 2% size, 100% opacity. And now we're gonna build on top of what we've just created. And this is going to further add texture. And this is gonna be like the outer edge anyway. So we just needed a foundation, something dark, structure to build upon. And I'm still keeping to the left and right as a motion, but it's now obliterating some of the rougher edges in a, a nice way. And we can have some of that texture just at the bottom section there a little bit. And you can see now, if I zoom in, that tree looks much more satisfying than the other ones. Again, this is not something that is super labor intensive. In fact, you could just scribble this left to right in a very similar way that we did before. Just obliterating some of the really untidy shapes that we've created with the black. But the black is essential because it just creates that variation in tone. Again, just go to the edges, anywhere where they, it looks kind of offensively scruffy with the black, you just go and scribble over it. But yeah, we want some of that variation in tone. I think that it really assists the overall look. Again, these don't need to be overly neat. You appreciate how rough I'm actually being. It's really not neat. I'm not spending any real time on this. It's a super quick technique. Very forgiving at this stage at the very least. Let me add some of the snow highlights. We're going to spend a little bit more care on it. But this stage is, is pretty straightforward and easy. Just scribbling it in for the largest part. Okay. So we'll just go to our layers and we'll create a new layer. Layer 9. So on this layer, we're going to go in with the probably the first color on the bottom row initially with 1% size, quite low on the 1% and maybe about 30% opacity and zoom in and going to our layers. What I'm aiming to do is create bands where we've got, in fact, I'll just do the first one. So I'm going to create a chunk where we've got stripes that kind of fan out to either side. So it creates this kind of a formation. So the outer bits are going to be at this angle and another one here, then here. And as we get into the center, we get a much more kind of straightforward, straight up and down formation. And then we can go above that again, more angled at the sides, leave some gaps. Gaps are going to be really important. And then here, and it, it really isn't difficult. Just creating a series of sloping things at the side. And as they get into the center, it's more straight. So maybe turn that a little bit more down. Now it doesn't want to be completely uniform, but generally speaking, if you do treat it in these kind of chunks, like I say, then it, it just gives you a, an easy way in. So that Once you start to get the hang of it, you don't need to stick to it quite as neatly as that. And it does look more organic, more natural, if you're just a bit more random. Once you get into the flow of the angles and the shapes, then you are going to speed up and then zoom in. So it's that angle and then it's the center, straighten and then fan out again at the other side. Allow it to merge in certain areas. You don't want it to be too distinctly different kind of bands. But yeah, some banding is, is definitely the kind of thing that you would see. We just don't want it too much. Just takes a few moments to create an effect roughly for one tree. I'm getting a little bit of a bend to it there. I don't really doesn't bother me too much, but there it is. Just fill it in a bit more on one side if, if it needs it. And down in the bottom section, a few more. Then maybe I'll switch to the second color on the bottom row. Put it up to maybe 50% opacity. And then just a bit more carefully on the outer edge. And it can creep in a little bit too, but I'm just creating some more distinct, brighter stripes. Not to say that we don't get some in the center too, but I almost want to create like the light is just creeping in on the edges and brightening it up there a little bit more. Some in the center, certainly. But I am focusing more of the lighter colors out at the side there. 
move it. Okay, once to turn the percentage down from 50 to something like 20. Again, this is a 20 is a bit low, maybe 35. You can just brighten some of these center areas up a little bit more. So there is a contrast, there is a difference, but it's not too stark. So, and that's going to have created the general look. That'll do for one of the trees. So we're going to go in and treat the other trees to the same kind of effect. So again, back to the first colour. Put it up to maybe 50%. Should do. And again, let's just get in there for the other trees. Again to the second colour, which is brighter. And again on the outer edges, I'm just going to make more of a feature of what we've already got. Maybe I'll put the opacity up to 80%. Let's really go for it. Really start to get in that nice contrast. Now we go back at the other trees, so I'm going to go back to the first grey, white, and put it down again to the 50. And go for the, some of the other trees, just get them in there as well. This section is a little bit more time consuming. Then we go back to the second colour, we put it up stronger, back up to the 80%, and let's just build in some of these highlights. Now, I'm going to have them kind of focused around the centre area. We're going to do a really nice bright reflection on the glass at the top. So I'm kind of imagining that it's bouncing around. There's a, a strong light source coming from outside, above the snow globe. So it's really going to be impactful on anything that's pointing towards the centre. So obviously it swaps sides, so on this side it's going to be on that right edge. On this side it's going to be on the left edge as it points towards the center. So we're really low down on the 1%. This is quite a heavily textured brush, so it might just go in there with the airbrushing and just start to add some kind of softer blobs of snow onto these tree textures too otherwise it's going to look a little bit too fragmented but we're just getting kind of background underneath texture in first we add some stronger highlights on this one then like we're saying i can go back in with the airbrushing soft brush second color on the bottom row one percent size 80% opacity again and we can just go in there and use this to soften in some of that it needs to be even lower on the 1% just to soften this into slightly more snow like shapes obviously when snow collects it has a softness that we haven't quite captured with that leatherwood brush so this is going to assist with some of that just bringing it together in yeah, nicer kind of soft shapes that would represent some of that snow. Perhaps I'll turn it down a little bit from the 80 down to about 60. It is a bit, a bit strong. We can now use all of those bands and shapes as our guide. We can start to just bunch it together in nice snow formations, things that just sort of connect them together a little bit more. Just nice kind of circular shapes. Just go in there and soften the look. Very fragmented, very kind of little particles of texture. Maybe put up a little bit more. We can tap it in and try a variety of techniques. So we've had it on the quite small size, or we can try slightly bigger. Maybe that's just a little bit too big. Just experiment with the size. Still within the 1%, it's quite a range. But you can try different techniques. 
just the tapping is a little bit easier or a combination of taps and little scribbles. I'm just going to switch to the white on the very end and again anything that points towards the center I'm just going to add some highlights of this really bright white at this point I feel like it needs a little bit of ramping up even more okay we may come back to the trees if needed I think we've got kind of foundation of them there. I think they're working generally quite well. Next thing we're going to do is create another layer, layer 10, still contained within the globe. We're going to go in with the soft brush still, and we're going to go in with the second color on the middle row, just into the 2% size and low at around 20% opacity. And then from these tree trunks, we're going to have a shadow. So imagine there's a light source here. So we've almost got shadows that will lean out from that point. So for example, we have a tree, it's going to obviously lean out that way. Anything that's directly above it, it's, the shadow is going to come this way, it's going to go that way, and like that as we get further towards the edges. Now it's not going to be super apparent, because we're going to have the shadow kind of broadening off anyway, because obviously as soon as we get a little bit beyond the bottom of the tree trunk, then we get the rest of the tree mass casting a shadow anyway. But yeah, If we're going to have that Kind of sense of a light source then we definitely need to have some kind of shadow in there as well just to kind of sell that concept a little bit more put it up to larger on the two percent size and just you know start to tap that in a little bit more in this bottom area shut down some of the, the lighter bits on the snow down there like that go back with the white and then down to the 1% size and well, about 40% will do. And in addition to the, the shadows, we're going to add some lighter sections as well. Again, just adds to the variation in tone just a little bit. Add some kind of texture. Okay, I'm going to go back to layer 6 that had the first kind of snow ground. And I'm going to put a layer above that, layer 11. I'm going to go to my brushes, elements, snow driven, or driven snow rather. And I'm going to have it at 50% size and maybe about 50% opacity. And just lightly, I'm just grazing that in a little bit. I want that to be subtle and I want it to be background, really. Then I'm going to go back up to layer 10. I'm going to put the size up to about 70. And I'm going to put the opacity up to 70. And then just a few more there in the foreground like that, but not too much. I'm going to go on layer 10 and create a new layer above that, layer 12. I'm going to go back to the airbrushing soft brush. However, I'm going to change the properties on layer 12 by tapping on the end and scrolling down to add. And I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to use the third color on the middle row. 5% size, really low at around 3% opacity. And I'm just going to start building in, just grazing it at the side there. Nice warm glow. And then more at this side too. Not anything dramatic, just subtle. Then I'm going to switch to maybe the second colour. On the bottom row, 10% size, still only 3% opacity. And just soften it in it up to the top there a little bit. And also down. And it's just subtle, but it's just bringing in some other elements now. I'm going to go back to the yellow orange the third color put it down to three percent size and three percent strength opacity and i'm just bringing that warmth at the very top in fact i'm gonna put it up to five percent just bring it around that very edge just a little bit more have it on the two percent size and about 30 percent opacity now so quite strong and i just want to carefully go around the edge a little bit more just grazing that outer area. I don't want it to be too much, but there you go. Perhaps we might even change to the luminance light pen to do this. Again, I'm going to have to turn it down to about 30. Change to the last color on the middle row, the orange, and just 
Yeah, a bit more of a hint of this. I think you need to be super careful. I don't want to go overboard with it, but just a bit more of this, just in that top area. Go back to the airbrushing soft brush. We'll go to the second color on the bottom row. 5% size, 10% opacity. In this top area, I'm just going to create a shape. Just a okay. shape that cuts across there. And then I'm going to bring it down a few more times until it kind of disappears there. Maybe expand it a bit further. Like so. Change to the medium brush. 3% size, 20% opacity. And we're just going to shape this a little bit more now. So, put it a few times at the very top, make get this a little bit clearer, and that works nicely. Maybe change to the white at the end of the bottom row, and just yeah, go over that a bit more, make it even brighter. Maybe turn it down to 2% and turn it up to 10% opacity, and just yeah, tap a bit, a bit more of this into this general area, a bit more of it in there. Maybe also go in with the third colour, again on the middle row. Tap some of that warm influence in here and in here. Turn it down again, 3% size. Just add a bit more kind of mottling. Maybe 2% isn't dramatic enough, up to 5. It's still very subtle, but yeah, I just want some variation of the influence of this. And perhaps I'll just add a little bit more on this bottom corner. Where it meets the base a little bit more as well. Again, some of it we're not going to see. Just a little bit more as it creeps into this lower region, I think will work. Okay, we can deselect the selection. Now we can see what we've got to play with. I'm going to go back to layer 9 and I'm going to go in with the soft brush. I'm going to go into the second colour on the bottom row. 2% size, 10% opacity and I'm just going to take some of these trees that are meant to be further back and just lighten them up a little bit like so and that's going to push some of the other ones a little bit further forward so we want to just dampen down the darkness create a sense of change of perspective if you want some to jump forward then they need to be darker create a variation of distance so on layer 12 i'm going to go in with the light pen within luminance i'm going to go to the fourth color on the middle row 100% size, well, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe 80, and 30% opacity, and let's just see, I think I'd quite like to bring in some of the glow around here, I'm just aiming for inside the sphere as much as possible, bring some of it around, maybe another point of interest at this edge, go over it a few times, that works quite nicely, I'm going to go to the second colour on the bottom row, and just carefully trace around that edge until it joins up there. Trace around here. It's brighter at the top there, maybe just a bit more in that shape too. I think I'm enjoying that a little bit more. I do think when I go to my trees, I'm going to pinch them all together. So there's seven to nine. Go onto that layer. Go onto the transform. Put it on free form. And then just squash it down from that little blue dot. I feel like I just need more of the sky visible. I think I went a bit overboard, made them too tall. I don't want them too squashed, obviously. But somewhere sensible, maybe in about there, think and deselect. I just I prefer that look. I think that works better. And then with that layer, I'm just going to slide and duplicate it, which will make some of the brighter bits just a touch brighter. I think that, again, works better. Pinch them together. Difficult to do. Top version, tap and merge down. I think that just ramps them up a little bit more. And again, we could always slide and duplicate them again just to further enhance that effect. Tap on it and merge down. We need to do a little bit of work on the base. Now, if we go to the top layer, that's where the outline for the base is. I'm going to use the selection automatic and grab the main shape and the next band above it too. I'm going to go to our layers and create a layer above layer five. So now we're on layer 11. Go to my colors. Probably the first colour, the black, and then just drag it into that first shape and the second band as well. Go back to my brushes, the airbrushing soft brush. Go 
go to my colors. Well, I'll go for the fourth color on the top row first. It's going to be quite subtle. 2% size, maybe 40% opacity. And we'll just build in a band here. So we've just got a bit of a highlight. You can see this shape. So this, this area here, as it goes around, you're just going to catch the light a little bit. Nothing too major. And then from this side, I'm just going to bring in a little bit of light as it just collects. Nothing too strong. Maybe just on this corner as well, just a hint. Then I'm going to switch color, go to maybe the missile color, maybe go to the sixth color along. And just, well, maybe I need to turn that down. 20%, 1% size. And just bring in a hint more. Perhaps I'll change color. In fact, I'll go for the second color on the bottom row. I do need to turn this down even further. 10% strength. And I'll have a bit of a highlight here. Maybe another couple of lines to go along with it. Okay, deselect, we'll go back to layer five and we'll turn that layer off, which is going to look pretty stark initially and you, you'll find it difficult to see some of these. Probably need to go over the gap, so I'll make it smaller on the 1% and I don't mind if it's got some of that warm colour showing through. I'm just going to make this line more distinct again. It is pretty visible still. If you need to zoom in, you can definitely still see it then. And... Again, on this side, again, zoom in. It only really becomes actually that clear and apparent when you do zoom in, but it is very much there. It should be. I'll just go over it a bit more. Now, I'm going to create a new layer above it and change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm going to go in with the fourth color on the middle row. And, well, we'll try with the soft brush. 1% size, 10% strength. And I've got a curve here at the edge that we just need to respect and take it around the back and then as it comes around the front it's going to really start picking up the light that's in here so I'll zoom in again follow that curve and then bring it around like so and let's have a look at it we can just add a little bit of light reflecting on that side light reflecting on that side curve it in maybe just fill in that area perhaps I need to put it up a little bit more 20 odd percent, fill it in. And then we can go along that bottom edge, increase the glow. And up into the globe, increase it around here, colour it in. in this section. Again, just extend this up a little bit. I was noticing some areas somehow that managed to extend out of there. So let's have a look. It's probably on the tree layer. It is. So go back to layer 7, the tree and the eraser. Doesn't matter how you set it. Small size, 100% and just yeah, neaten and tidy that up. Perhaps with the soft brush, still that fourth colour, I'm going to put it down to 2% size, 10% strength. And I'm just going to build in because the snow is obviously going to reflect some of this light. So we've got a really nice kind of glow coming in here. So bottom of the snow area needs to reflect that back a little bit. Needs to respond to that light source. Go into some of these trees. Maybe turn it down even more, down to the 1%. And anywhere where we've got these white details, maybe it could be reflecting back some of this light too. Probably not on the ones that are in the distance. It would need to be more foreground ones. So I suggest maybe the bigger one here. I do think that that tree, in fact, is still a little bit too crisp. So back onto layer seven. Adjustments, Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur it in. Just another one and a bit percent, not quite two. Back up to layer 12. And again, just go back over some of these areas on the tree. If it's close to where we are here, then it's going to be just reflecting back some of that light. A little bit more anyway. And then obviously on the ground. Still on layer 12, I'm going to go to the light pane within luminance. I'm going to use the second colour on the bottom row. And I'm just going to subtly bring into these centre areas. Just ramp up the light there a little bit more. And then, yeah, just tap in some more texture. Maybe just the top of the trees are just going to catch the light a little bit more. Why not? especially in that centre area. Just push it a bit more. Back to the fourth colour, the orange. Go back to the airbrushing soft brush. 2% size, 10% opacity. And yeah, we'll just work on this line a little bit more. Just 
back to the second colour on the bottom row and just as much as I want that warmth in there I don't want to lose some of that coolness so a bit of the mixture in these corners I think is just even better. Turn it down to the lowest part of 1% just sneak in a little bit more of a highlight around the edge there and there and then perhaps just a hint of it around that section and even then maybe in the center of this area too we have a nice mixture of the whitest colors and the warm colors so we want to have both of them represented in the highlight now we need to do something with the base area so we'll go back to layer two perhaps create a layer ab above it and then change the blend mode from normal whoops to add go back in with a soft brush with an airbrushing choose an appropriate color well, we've got a lot of this orange, so we'll go for the fourth colour in the middle row. 5% size, 5% strength, and I'm just going to build in some of that warmth either side. I'm going to turn it so it's easier to kind of understand, or do large sweeping movements anyway. Perhaps 5% size isn't big enough. That's 7. Just sweep across a few times. Then we need to add something here in the front area too. That's quite vibrant that, so I'm going to have to perhaps just tone that down a little bit. So it's still in the same layer. I'm going to go for this colour, which is the sixth colour. Turn it down a little bit, back down to the about the 5%. Add some of it in this area. In fact, even smaller, 3% at the lowest part. Build in some highlights either side there. To my colors, maybe try the last color on the top row. That's really starting to work quite nicely. I'm going to turn that down to 2% and just lightly kind of graze some lines across. And then perhaps if we go back to layer 2 and maybe create another layer above that, layer 14, and go in with the black first colour. Maybe a bit higher, so just into the 2%, 50% opacity. And yeah, I'm just pressing lightly, bringing some rain in here. Just try to generally get that sense in there. Hold it if you need it to snap and then you can double it up with another line. Just close but not quite. Once you start to get a little bit of a grain, then we probably need to turn it up to maybe about 5% size, 10% opacity, and, well, we need to build some shadow in. So as well as the highlight, we definitely need some shadow. Go back up to layer 13 with the eraser set to soft brush, maybe 3% size, 20 something opacity, and just Soften it in around here. You don't want to lose all the detail, but you just want to get rid of some of that. That makes it too apparent where the, the base ends. With the soft brush, and well, we use this last color again. Turn it down. 2% size, 10% opacity, and well, we can further play around with some of these grains. So we've got some of those dark lines in there. 10% is a bit strong. Maybe 5. You can just further kind of enhance some of this rain in the foreground area. Doesn't need to be too strong, just a suggestion. Go a long way like that. Back up again, 5%, just build in a slight more glow just around the edges there. I think that is quite nice. And then I'm going to create another layer above that, layer 15, and it's going to be behind most of what we've got. So I'm going to go in with the elements, driven snow, Probably 100% size, 70% opacity, and probably need to go to the white. And I'm going to create some snow, another pass of that. And it's probably not big enough, so I'm going to go to the transform, and freeform, and just yeah, maybe expand that out a little bit. So we feel like it's just about the right amount. Then we can go to the adjustments. 
motion blur and we could even blur that to the side a little bit as well still on the same layer maybe with the soft brush and the last color three percent size ten percent opacity in fact even less on the pass opacity maybe only five percent we could just start to create a sense just a hint that some of the snow is kind of falling in little collections around I don't want to labor that point but you get the idea back up to a higher layer so we'll go to layer 12 Perhaps so we'll go in with the luminance light pen and this end white I really want to wrap that up 100% size 100% opacity just to kind of fuse them together a little bit I think that works and then to the soft brush with an airbrushing and well we'll go for the second color and 20% size, maybe 3% strength. Just circle it around there a little bit. And then just a bit more at the top as well. Just a hint. Do you think I just want to go back to layer 7 with probably the soft brush with an airbrushing with the white. Turn it down, 1% size, 20% opacity. And I feel like I've just lost some of those 50% opacity. I feel like when we lightened up, we just lost some of the clarity on these trees. So if I needed to go in there and just fine tune them a little bit, bring out some of these textures, a hint more, then you can do that. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed following along. Please leave me a comment. It really helps out the channel. Give me some suggestions of things I could do in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and I shall see you back here soon. Bye for now.